Hello and welcome back to today's video. So we're going to be having a quick look at integrating x sine inverse of x, otherwise known as arc sine of x, and we're integrating with respect to x. So let's dive right in. So the first thing that we should recognize here is that we're going to be needing to use an integration by parts. So a quick reminder for our formula for integration by parts. So the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so now which one is going to be u, which one's going to be dv? Well, we go back to our Liate principles. So that stands for logarithm, inverse, algebraic, trigonometric, and exponential. So the first one we see going down like this, that occurs in our original problem, that's what we set u to be equal to. So we see that there's no logarithms, and then we go, aha, we do have an inverse function in here. So that means now that we'll say u is going to be equal to sine inverse of x. And that means now, well, du is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. If you're not quite sure how I've gotten from arc sine of x to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x here, I have done a similar video covering the inverse tangent function. So I'll leave that in the description if you'd like to check that out, and that way you can see it follows a very, very similar procedure as to how we get the derivative of that inverse function there. Okay, and so that means now that we have dv is going to be equal to x, and therefore v is equal to x squared on 2. Okay, so we're actually doing pretty well so far, so that means that our problem will now become, well, the integral of x sine inverse of x dx is now equal to uv, so I'll write this out as x squared on 2 sine inverse of x minus the integral of v du, so v is x squared on 2, and du again, so that means we'll have that square root 1 minus x squared in our denominator there. Okay, so I'm not going to bother writing out our left-hand side over here uh, much longer, so I'm just going to keep going with our right-hand side, and let's see what we get. So we still have x squared on 2 sine inverse of x, and now we see that we can take out a factor of a half, so that'll become minus one half times the integral of x squared over the square root of one minus x squared and integrating that with respect to x. Okay, so how do we tackle this integral now? Because this isn't looking much nicer for us. So what we actually need to do is we actually need to use a trigonometric substitution now. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let x equal to sine of theta. So what that means for us now is, well, clearly, theta is equal to the sine inverse of x. And that means that dx d theta is now going to be equal to cos of theta. So I can then rewrite dx is equal to cos theta d theta. Okay, so let's see what happens to this section of our problem now as we apply the substitutions. So again, we'll still have that x squared sine inverse of x on 2. But now it's going to become minus 1 half out the front of, well, x squared. That's now just going to be sine squared theta. dx, well, we know that's going to be cos theta d theta. And then now over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is now going to be sine squared theta. And we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is actually just equal to cos squared theta. Okay, since we know that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is always equal to 1. So what that allows us to do now is just rewrite our denominator as well, the square root of cos squared theta. And so the square root of a squared, that will disappear. And we end up with just having a cos theta on our denominator there. And that is going to cancel out with that cos theta in our numerator as well. So now our problem actually looks quite a bit nicer. So again, x squared sine inverse x all on 2 minus now a half times the integral of sine squared theta d theta. Okay, so it is looking quite a bit nicer now. But what we need to do now is we actually need to refer back to uh, some of our other trigonometric identities. And we'll use the fact that sine squared theta can be rewritten as a half minus a half cos 2 theta, okay? So what that's going to let us do now is just rewrite this problem with this new form over here. 
So again, x squared sine inverse on x, uh, all over 2, I should say, and then minus 1 half. Now this will become integral of 1 half minus 1 half cos 2 theta, and then d theta on the end there. And so we see we can take out a factor of a half, so I might just make this a quarter out the front, and I'll change that to just being a 1. And so let's see what happens now. Well, we can just do this as two separate integrals. So this would then become, well, x squared sine inverse x on 2 minus, well, 1, integrate that with respect to theta, is just simply going to be theta. So we have theta on 4. And then we'll have cos 2 theta. Integrating that, well, we know that we would end up with sine 2 theta over 2. And we know that we've got that factor of 1 on 4 out the front as well, so that would in fact change it to being a 1 on 8. However, sine 2 theta, we know that we can rewrite that, since we know that sine 2 theta is in fact equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So now if we do that, our problem now becomes 2 sine theta cos theta. And so we see that 2 and that 8 will cancel out, so we'll have still a 1 on the top and a 4 on the bottom there. Okay, so we are finally getting through, and also we should make sure to keep track of our negatives as well, since this will now become a positive, since I've brought that negative 1 quarter inside there. Okay, so now we are definitely getting there, so let's quickly see what we can do. So I might be able to take a factor of a quarter out the front, and so we've got now a quarter out the front of... 2x squared sine inverse of x minus theta plus sine theta cos theta. Okay, well, quick reminder, what is theta? So we defined theta earlier as simply being equal to sine inverse of x. Okay, so sine inverse of x, well, that means we can now rewrite that part as just simply sine inverse x. And what about sine of sine inverse of x? Well, that will just simply become x. And now the last thing that we need to sort out is this cos theta term here. So cos theta, well, let's quickly write that out in full. So that would be cos of sine inverse of x. Okay, let's quickly refer back to what these trigonometric terms actually mean. So I know that sine inverse of x is just going to be corresponding to some sort of angle here. So let's call that angle u for now. So that means if I say u is equal to sine inverse of x, well, then that means that sine of u is equal to x, okay? So just taking sine of both sides of this equation here. And so if I said sine of anything, well, we know that that is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, thanks to, well, Sokotoa. So that means now that I can rewrite this triangle out as simply having an opposite length of x and a hypotenuse length of 1. So now if I wanted to figure out what our missing side was going to be, well, we'd just refer back to Pythagoras' theorem, and so then we would get this length here is simply 1 minus x squared, all square rooted. So again, let's consider that this is where our angle of sine inverse x is. Well, now if I take cos of that angle, that is simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that means now that cos of sine inverse of x is simply equal to square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's exactly what we find we can rewrite that above in our problem. So instead of writing cos theta, we'll now refer back to that as 1 minus x squared, all square root. Okay, and so just quickly neatening up the way that we'll be writing out our solution now, well, we see that there's a common term of sine inverse x, so we might be able to rewrite this a little bit neater. And so we'll end up with one quarter out the front. We've got x times square root of 1 minus x squared. Then we'll say plus 2x squared minus 1, all in brackets, multiplied now by sine inverse of x. And there we go. And so because this is an indefinite integral, let's not forget our plus c term on the end there. And that is our final answer for today. So if you have enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. If you have any recommendations or suggestions of videos that you'd like to see, then please let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you have a great day and stay curious.